Earlier, we also talked to Sivanka Danapala, the UNHCR representative in Syria. Sivanka, um, I hope you and your teams are fine, you know, under the circumstances. Thank you for that. Thank you. We're uh, happy to say that all of our staff, uh, just hours after the earthquake, we were able to confirm everyone was, was safe and accounted for. Um, sadly, we can't say the same thing for our colleagues in, uh, in Turkey. Um, there are still a number of colleagues who are, who are missing. Um, tell us what's going on on the ground. What is the latest? Well, thank you very much for, for giving us this opportunity to, to communicate uh, uh, the situation on the ground. Uh, sure. I think I'd like to say how, how deeply saddened we are by, by really the, the devastating earthquake that took place uh, the day before yesterday in the morning. We're all still quite shaken. Um, there have been a number of uh, aftershocks and also other quakes that have taken place since then. Uh, I was uh, literally before going into an interview yesterday evening with the media, uh, I was receiving reports about two quakes that took place in, um, in and around the coastal governorates. Of course, they were less severe uh, than the one on, on Monday morning, but we really have seen uh, a huge uh, amount of damage uh, and of course, loss of life. Um, uh, we stand very much in solidarity with, with all of those who've been affected by this. Uh, um, but of course, I think the, what I really need to, to emphasize right at the outset is how uh, this uh, uh, most recent development makes a very, very bad situation much, much worse. It compounds uh, the suffering uh, that the Syrian people have been going through for the last uh, 12 years. Yes, Ivanka, we understand that it is a very complex and complicated situation in northern Syria, the affected area. Um, some part of that area is controlled by some extremists, according to the government. Um, some areas are, in effect, um, controlled by Western-backed forces. Uh, some of the area, of course, are under the government control. Um, how does that division and years of civil war complicate the rescue and relief uh, efforts on the ground? Well, it certainly doesn't help, but I think uh, before I get on to, to that, just to say that whenever an earthquake might take place, it is never a good moment, but this couldn't have happened at a worse time. Uh, we are in the height of winter. Uh, there was literally a snow blizzard uh, uh, passing through uh, Damascus this morning, uh, but we've had a number of the affected areas, of course, covered in snow, very cold temperatures, um, and uh, one has to really, uh, uh, my heart goes out for those who are stuck under rubble, who uh, find themselves uh, without shelter uh, in, this, in this very uh, tragic moment. Um, we, uh, uh, working in Damascus, are able to uh, reach uh, areas that are controlled by, by government. Uh, over 70% of the, of the country can be reached uh, from uh, Damascus. Um, the areas to the northwest that have been impacted, I just received reports today uh, that uh, our counterparts in, in government have in fact asked us to accelerate uh, cross-line uh, uh, deliveries of humanitarian assistance, and we will be working uh, towards that. Um, the UN has always advocated um, in the northwest um, uh, that we use all modalities uh, for assistance. This includes a cross-border uh, from Turkey, from Gaziantep, uh, but also cross-line from within government-controlled areas into northwestern Syria. Now, the cross-border modality has, of course, been um, significantly impeded because of damage sustained by the earthquake. Uh, so certainly, I can say uh, uh, for us, for those of us who are uh, working in government controlled areas, we're trying our best to now uh, move forward on the cross line movements. Yeah, we saw the latest uh, casualties. Uh, um, do you expect this number to go up significantly uh, given what's going on and given the um, unfolding of the uh, rescue and relief efforts? Tragically, yes. Uh, I wish I didn't have to say that, uh, but uh, I was uh, in communication with the Syrian Arab Red Crescent. Uh, uh, president just yesterday. I, I know they, the window uh, for search and rescue efforts is, is closing. Uh, 
um, the time. Uh, That's 72 uh, hours, right? Or close exactly. to that. So we're very close to that window uh, closing and um, certainly um, uh, they're beyond the, the casualties that might have been caused by the earthquake itself directly. Uh, there's a number of uh, uh, indirect casualties, if you like, that could uh, result uh, by simple exposure to the cold. Uh, I was just mentioning we're in the height of winter, um, that, that snow has fallen and is falling in a number of the affected areas. Um, and of course, looking ahead, we also have to uh, uh, ensure that uh, you know, various health risks are, uh, uh, are attended to and are clothed, that they have shelter, uh, a number of other uh, issues that need uh, tending to to prevent uh, a further loss of life. Yeah, many international organizations, including the Red Cross Society of China and also some volunteer groups in China, has uh, have pledged assistance for the Syrian uh, Red Crescent. How easy or difficult is it for them to arrive in Syria, given the very limited land and air connections? I can tell you that the the border crossing between um, the, the one that we generally use between uh, from, from Beirut to Damascus is very much at a high mountain pass and that is already uh, uh, quite snow ridden but possible uh, at uh, the last time I checked. Um, so I think roads uh, can access certainly Damascus and from Damascus we can reach into a, a number of the affected areas, um, Aleppo, uh, Hama, Latakia, uh, Idlib, which is in, of course, uh, non-government controlled areas, is, is going to be accessed through cross-line. But as I mentioned earlier, we look at all modalities and the moment cross-border becomes possible, uh, that would be a modality that could also be used. Um, as far as the, the UN is concerned and, and the wider humanitarian community, we, we look at the humanitarian imperative and really, it's all systems go. We need to help as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. In January, according to UNHCR, 15.3 million people already needed humanitarian aid inside Syria. And there are almost 7 million internally displaced people. Um, how will this disaster, the earthquake, further impact a country already ravaged by war and uh, internal displacement? pre-earthquake, um, you know, Syrians I've spoken to in the last two years that I have been here uh, have told me that, um, you know, even during the worst days of, of the conflict, when, when bombs were falling, of course, life was bad, life was, was dangerous, but it's really these last two, three years that have been, uh, had, have had the worst impact. And when I asked why, it was very much because of the cumulative impact of, of 12 years of war, the overall economic situation, as you know, even pre-COVID, there was an economic crisis in Lebanon. The economies of Lebanon and Syria are intrinsically linked. Uh, so people were feeling that. And then of course, two years of COVID and the economic toll that that has exacted uh, on the economy is, is huge. Um, so really putting the earthquake and the impact of the earthquake on top of all of that um, really has, has, has brought many, many Syrians uh, to their knees. And, and it is an extremely difficult period. Um, I call upon the international community to help in any way possible uh, in, in assisting the Syrian uh, people in this situation. Um, can you tell us a bit about the work of uh, UNHCR in the country? I suppose that there are so many priorities and conflicting priorities, perhaps. Uh, what is the, the line of work for you right now? Uh, what is really the priority in face of the earthquake? Well, right now, I would say uh, we've been mobilizing uh, for the to, to meet the immediate needs of, of those who have been uh, impacted by the, the earthquake. I mentioned earlier the, the search and rescue operations that are underway and, and really trying to move as quickly as possible because before that, that narrow window uh, closes completely. But beyond that also, uh, and it's not just UNHCR, we're working with a number of other UN agencies, a number of non-governmental organizations, international and national, um, to, to see if we can provide meals ready to eat, uh, including hot meals for, for families that have been displaced. Um, we are looking at uh, uh, provision of what we call core relief items, and that involves a, a, a number of different uh, items like uh, thermal blankets, uh, like mattresses, 
uh, like sleeping mats, uh, winter winter garb, winter jackets, winter clothing uh, is, is extremely important. And of course, looking at other items, uh, ensuring that people have a safe drinking water, uh, that they have access to medicine, uh, first aid kits, uh, trauma care, because in fact, uh, this has exacted a heavy toll uh, uh, on people from a mental health point of view, uh, dignity kits uh, for, for women uh, and girls. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, you know, given the, the kind of uh, 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 trauma situation uh, uh, and social and, and mental health, I think we are also trying to provide as much psychosocial support as possible. In fact, we're trying to do that for our own staff as well as, as those affected uh, uh, outside of, of, of our uh, organization. Yeah. Now, finally, uh, Sivanka, I know that you left China some two years ago, and uh, now you're in Syria facing a very complicated and complex situation. What has been the biggest challenge or challenges for you, both personally and professionally? Well, in many ways, I think um, I think what it's a challenge that I embrace, uh, the fact that we are working under extremely uh, difficult circumstances in, in trying to uh, ensure support for the Syrian people. Uh, for me, you know, uh, UNHCR has been in Syria since 1991, and Syria has traditionally been extremely generous towards refugees coming from other countries, uh, whether they are Iraqis, uh, whether they are Afghans, whether they are uh, Sudanese and South Sudanese, uh, different um, nationalities that have sought refuge in Syria. So I really felt that in, you know, this, these last 12 years have exacted such a, a, a heavy toll on, on, on the Syrians themselves. It has been a challenge to, to rise and, and ensure support for, for all people, for vulnerable people, for persons with disabilities, for the elderly, uh, for children, um, there are some very, very trying circumstances, but at the end of the day, you know, I think in, in our line of work, we, we have to be optimists. Um, we, we can't be um, put off uh, by the challenges that we face, and I always see the glass uh, half full. So I'm, I'm, I'm encouraged, and despite the, the many challenges that are thrown our way, this, this earthquake being the most uh, recent, I, I, I'm convinced that we, we must uh, persevere uh, for the sake of, of the Syrian people. Sivanka, please take care. Um, kudos to your work and the work of your team. Thank you very much for having me. That will do it for this edition of The Hub on CGTN. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our news coverage continues on CGTN. Bye and take care.